But if you want to build something great, if you want to positively impact your generational legacy, you're going to have to put in the work. And it's going to be tough. It's going to suck, quite frankly. But it will be worth it. Well, first, before I get started, I want to give a quick round of applause for them for building this community. I cannot wait to see what comes of it. I have no doubt it's gonna be impressive. Absolutely excited. So let's give them a quick round of applause. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I am going to be talking about marketing and building a brand. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this out there. I just started my business three months ago. I have no clue what I'm doing. That's my dirty little secret. That's not gonna stop me from sharing, hopefully, an entertaining story and educating you on a few different things. Now to do this, I'm gonna go back just a little bit. For the majority of my life and career, I was the typical introverted IT nerd. I was a keyboard warrior, sat in my office with the door closed, designing data centers, WAN architecture, all of that highly, highly technical stuff. I did not know what people's skills were. If I didn't know you, I was not talking to you. Now, I also had a massive chip on my shoulder to prove something to everybody. So I was actually able to achieve a decent level of success by most standards. I got the six-figure salary. I got the director title. I got the VP title. All of these things in the IT arena. I built a tremendous amount of confidence in the process. And then in my mid-30s, I had an opportunity to step in and start leading human resources at the company that I worked for. Oh, so talk about checking your ego. Going from being the IT nerd to having to lead a team of HR professionals and try to understand human emotion and lead a team of HR professionals. That was uh, stressful. And I quickly was... Mm, I quickly recognized that, ah, man, I wasn't as good as I thought I was. And I had to figure out how to build confidence in this new domain. I actually had to step back and think, well, wait, I was so confident over here in IT, but not in HR. Why is that? And upon reflection, just realized, well, it was because I had time in the seat. I spent years focusing on technology. I was passionate about it, excited about it, and ultimately ended up realizing that I was just going to have to put the reps in. I was going to have to learn effective communication. I was going to have to learn how to navigate conflict, learn about payroll processes and benefits and all of those different things. As the years progressed, I started to get more comfortable with it. I put my head down, started doing the work, reading, studying, applying that knowledge, and I started to build confidence when it comes to leading people. And, and actually, in the end, it turned into my passion and purpose in life is really building leaders, leadership development, building cultures of performance. That's what I love. That's what gets me excited. It's my mission and purpose in life. And then I transitioned over and started leading safety and transportation and a lot of other functional domains at that publicly traded oil and gas company. Pretty much all corporate functions, aside from accounting, because who wants to work with accountants? I mean, really. Um, now, why am I sharing all of this? Because confidence is important. Whenever you start thinking about putting yourself out there, marketing yourself, building your brand, you have to get attention. Attention is our number one currency. That's what we got to focus on. Who's comfortable with their online presence knowing that they're giving it their all? Is anybody? No. Oh, perfect. All right. Okay, so this is something that it, it just doesn't come natural to us. We have to start forcing ourselves out of our comfort zone. We have to start learning more about getting out there. So I'm gonna talk you through a little bit of an example. Let's just say Sally. She loves knitting and weaving and making quilts and things like that. Sally decides to start a business. Well, she's gotta figure out where her customers are at because she's gotta advertise. It doesn't matter if she is the best in the world at it. If nobody knows who she is, she's going to fail. Her business is going to fail. So we got to start thinking about, okay, who are Sally's customers? Well, we could probably assume maybe female between the ages of 60 and 80. I, I, I don't know. 
but that's probably a safe bet, right? So where do those customers hang out? Probably church and bingo, but in the virtual world, where do they hang out? They're not hanging out on LinkedIn. I can promise you that. Are they on Instagram? Maybe. They might be hanging out on MySpace. Yeah, maybe. But it's a pretty safe bet that they're going to be on Facebook. Is that fair? Can we all agree on that? Yeah. They're going to be playing Farmville. Was that a thing? Right? And then they're going to be looking at, at their kids' and grandkids' pictures and things like that. So let, Sally needs to learn how to create a community on Facebook. She needs to learn how to market and advertise her services on Facebook. So for us, we are management consulting and leadership development. Our customers are not hanging out on Facebook. I learned a very difficult lesson. I spent two years trying to build my Instagram followers. Two years ago, had about 450 followers. Two years of effort posting every single day, stories and reels and carousels and get, like everything I could to gain 1,500 followers. And then I thought, my God, what am I, I'm looking, I'm doing all the research, why can't I grow? And then it just hit me. I looked over to LinkedIn, where I wasn't trying at all, and had over 4,000 followers. Just because of the random content that I would put out there, it resonated with people. And then it hit me, the people that I want to work with, that we can provide value to, they're on LinkedIn to grow. They want to progress in their careers, so they're going to be consuming that content. That's where their mindset is at. So the lesson here is find where your customers are at and invest in building skills in marketing and advertising and building a community on that platform. You've got to start somewhere. And I'm not saying don't advertise and market on all of them, but start in one place because they're, all of their algorithms are gonna operate differently. Maximize your time so that it's focused on high leverage areas, okay? So that's the big thing. Now, you're probably saying, well, I don't know anything about advertising on any of these platforms, okay? Well, the nice thing is every single one of us have this device in our pocket, which grants us access to almost the entirety of human knowledge, and it's free. Google is your best friend. YouTube is another really good friend. Generative AI. Yeah, those are some big words, but ChatGPT, I'm sure you all have all heard of. Has anybody played with ChatGPT? Quick show of hands. That's great. So probably 60-ish percent of you. The rest of you have homework. Go for, set up a free account and play with ChatGPT. It will blow your mind. Log on, my name is Sean Barnes. I have a coaching and consulting company. I don't know how to market. Here's what my target customer looks like. Here's their patterns and habits. What do I do? Enter. It will blow your mind. But it gets even better than that when you say, oh, well actually I do know how to do that. But tell me more about this. Treat it like you're having a conversation with a human. Use it as an augmentation of your team, of your staff. That is the secret. Generative AI has been only out for what, 18 months-ish, something like that. It is extremely, extremely powerful. There is no reason for any of us to not be able to accomplish all the things that we want to accomplish in life right now. Technology at the tip of our fingers can give us all the knowledge we need. It can walk us through step by step. The last thing that I think any of us want is to get into our 60s and 70s and retire and look back on our life and think, I could have done more. Talk about regret. There's no reason that you can't do more. Everything is free. It's at your fingertips. How about don't watch the game on Sunday? I know that's crazy. <laughs> Spend 30 minutes investing in learning skills, learning how to grow your brand, showcasing your skills and what you're capable of doing. It's not going to be easy. I'm, I'm going to promise you that. I've had the podcast for three years and the, the first few episodes I actually leave up because they were bad. 
I think Daniel was the only one listening, and Mary. They were the only one, and my mom. So um, had three listeners for the first year. But uh, it's going to take time. You've got to be intentional about what you are doing. But if you want to build something great, if you want to positively impact your generational legacy, you're going to have to put in the work. And it's going to be tough. It's going to suck, quite frankly. But it will be worth it.